Hello viewers, this lecture video explains Gauss law and its mathematical representation. Let us consider a point charge Q is placed as shown in the figure and a closed surface or a Gaussian surface is constructed around the point charge distribution. As an example, let us assume there are 8 positive charges within a point charge. Here the red color line represents the electric flux or the electric field. We can see that there are 8 number of lines coming out of the point charge and it is crossing the Gaussian surface. So the number of electric lines of force will be equal to the charge enclosed. So this is the theory behind Gauss law that is the electric flux or the electric lines of force coming out of or crossing a Gaussian surface will be equal to the charge enclosed within that Gaussian surface. So we can say Q is equal to psi where Q represents the charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface. Psi represents the electric lines of force crossing the Gaussian surface. The surface over which Gauss law is applied is called as Gaussian surface. The shape of the Gaussian surface depends upon the type of charge distribution. For example, for a point charge distribution, the Gaussian surface will be a sphere, whereas for a line charge distribution, the Gaussian surface will be a cylinder. Another point to be noted here is, the electric flux will be always normal to the Gaussian surface. We can note that this line of force is perpendicular to the surface or the Gaussian surface. Let us assume we have a point charge distribution. Around the point charge distribution, a closed Gaussian surface is considered. To find out electric field intensity and electric flux density, a small differential area ds is taken over the Gaussian surface. Then a vector d is constructed starting from the charge distribution and crossing d. Now the total charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface will be equal to integral d vector dot d. Here d vector will be equal to dn an. Here n represents normal component. Now we are going to see what are the steps involved in finding electric field intensity and electric flux density using Gauss law. The first major step involved to find out e vector and d vector choose a suitable coordinate system. The type of coordinate system depends upon the type of charge distribution. For example, if we have a point charge, we have to choose spherical coordinate system. If we have a line charge, we have to choose a cylindrical coordinate system. After deciding the coordinate system, we have to construct a closed Gaussian surface around the charge distribution as shown in the field. So we have a point charge around a point charge. A spherical Gaussian surface has been constructed. Similarly, we have a line charge. Over the line charge, a closed Gaussian surface has been constructed. The third step is take a small differential area ds over the Gaussian surface and a d vector is constructed starting from the charge distribution and passing through ds. The fourth step involved is we have to evaluate the charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface using q is equal to integral d vector dot ds vector and from this we can find the value of dn. After finding the value of dn we can find out d vector using the relationship d vector is equal to dn an. An refers to unit normal vector. This vector will be always perpendicular to ds. Finally we can find out e vector using the relationship d vector is equal to epsilon naught e vector. Here e vector is equal to d vector divided by epsilon naught. Thus, we can find out electric field intensity and electric flux density for different type of charge distributions using Gauss.